हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू गेट एकेडमी ग्लोबल So now we will discuss about the riveted joints in a boiler. Okay, so we will design the riveted joint for a boiler chain. So design of riveted joint, riveted joint for a boiler shell. Okay, so for the discussion, we will see a cylindrical shell. Okay, so here we will consider cylindrical boiler shell. so assume a cylindrical cylindrical boiler shell okay also we will consider that the shell is a thin shell shell that is the pressure vessel of the boiler is a thin pressure vessel okay so in boiler there will be a portion where we will store the highly pressurized steam okay and we will be supplying the steam to the turbine okay so hence we will consider that the shell of the boiler is having a thickness t such that the diameter of the internal diameter of shell d divided by t or you can say sorry d divided by t will be equal to or greater than 20 okay will be equal to or greater than 20 so this is the criteria of thin shells this is the criteria of the thin shell okay in some reference you will also find that dyt should be greater than or equal to 15 okay for thin shells so both are correct now if this is a thin pressure vessel basically a thin shell then in that case as uh, if this is a cylindrical shell then there will be two directions one will be the longitudinal direction second will be the circumferential direction okay so this direction is known as the longitudinal direction this is the longitudinal direction longitudinal direction and this direction that is along the circumference of the shell this is circumferential direction circumferential directions okay i'll be discussing what are the different aspects of the stresses induced in the pressurized vessel now in order to form a particular shell first of all let us discuss how can we form a shell as in strength of material you have discussed about a thin cylindrical shell and a spherical shell then the procedure of forming a shell is very important now if there is a casting process if there is a casting process then through casting you can form a seamless cylindrical shell there will be no joint if it is made up of a casting process or a particular forming process is there in that case also if there is a completely pack cylindrical shell then it is not possible to form a a cylindrical shell without any joint in for from any forming method so if you want to form a uh, if you want to make a seamless cylindrical shell then you must go for a casting process okay but the limitation of casting is that you will not be able to form you will not be able to cast a very large size of shell okay so in pressure vessels you will be having a very large size of the shell so in that situation you must have joints okay so in order to make a very large shell we will not be creating only one shell at a time by casting we will be joining different portions so that we can for, we can have a very large cylinder or spherical pressure vessel okay so how can we have a large cylindrical pressure vessel so if you look into the cylindrical portion so if you want to have a very large cylinder so it its diameter must be very high its length must be very high so length can be increased by connecting two different cylinders okay two hollow cylinders that means two uh, cylindrical shells will be connected okay now in order to connect two cylindrical shells what we can do if this is the first cylindrical shell and this is the second cylindrical shell then we will be adding those two and will be getting a long cylindrical shell and here will be having a joint this is the joint okay now 
if two from here you can understand if two shells are connected longitudinally in order to increase the length then we will be having a circumferential joint okay so this is a longitudinal this is to increase the length to increase to increase length to increase length two shells are connected two shells are connected okay now these two shells are connected by are connected by circumferential joint here you will be having an overlapping circumference there will be an overlap around the circumference between the shell number 1 and shell number 2 and then you will be applying the rivets or the welds whatever you want okay and you will be able to find form the circumferential ferential joint okay so two different shells can be joined by the circumferential joint okay now now if the diameter that is internal diameter is very high then also it is not possible for us then it is not also possible for us to make uh, a large diameter at one stretch we will be having two semi cylinders okay that means two halves will be there and they will be connected by a proper joint so that we will be having a shell so in order to make a shell if this shell is having very large inner diameter this is the inner diameter of the shell inner dia of shell and if d is very high then we cannot have a very large cylinder at one time then what we will do so a proper manufacturing process is used to make a very large diameter shell and the process will be like this you will be having two different plates okay let us say you have two different plates identical in size okay two different plates will be identical in size let us say plate a and plate b will be there then by using some proper fabrication process you will form the plate a and b in the shape of semi circular arc okay you will make a semi circular arc or you can say semi cylinder out of these okay semi cylinder out of these okay and they will look like they will look more like a semi hollow cylinder semi hollow cylinder hollow cylinders okay and this will be the inner radius r okay so they will be formed in this shape by bending operation or by rolling operation different manufacturing processes are possible so that they can be formed in this plate so you will be using plates or sheets you can say and they will you will be forming them in this shape okay these are known as d's okay these so two d's will be used like this they will be arranged in this position and here you can say this is the end this is the end of the d okay this is the ends of the d this is the ends or you can say the extreme surface of the d's okay now this end of the different d's will be attached to each other and you can see a cylinder like this okay here this is a freehand diagram so you will not be able to see the proper cylindrical shape let me draw it again okay so this will be like this okay, okay. so here you will be having end to end contact end to end contact okay everything is very important you are an engineer you are an engineer okay so you must understand everything in detail okay so here you will be having an end to end contact between the two d's that is two halves two d's d's or you can say halves okay so between these two halves we have end to end connection now here we want to make the joint so they will be connected as to they will be connected like this and here we'll be having a circumferential joint and here as two d's are connected as two d's are connected if you see the joint properly then you will see that these may look like this these may look like this okay so here we will have a joint along the length this is the joint along the length and in that case where we have joined two shells with each other there we have a circumferential joint and when we join the two halves of the shell 
we have two halves of the shell okay then we have a joint along length or you can call it longitudinal joint longitudinal joint okay so here in order to join the two halves of the shell we will be using longitudinal joint and here we will be using the circumferential joint so here we will be putting rivets along the circumference this is the rivets along the circumference okay in order to form circumferential joints and here we will be using rivets along the longitudinal axis this is rivets rivets along longitudinal axis okay now they will be subjected to certain value of stresses and that we will be discussing later now if i ask you that here to to join two halves of the shell to join two halves or two d's you can say these or halves of the of the shell which kind of riveted joint you can use so here as he as here we have an end to end connection okay here we have end to end connection and we cannot have any overlapping surface in order to form a proper cylinder we cannot have an overlapping connection we must have an end to end connection in order to have a proper cylindrical shell okay hence due to end to end connection which is only possible connection between these two d's we have only option that is butt joint so we will be using butt joint to form the longitudinal joint okay so the longitudinal joint will be the butt joint will be the butt joint okay due to the end to end connection required between the halves due to due to end to end connection required required between the halves okay we'll be using the butt joint so here we'll be using in uh, for for a better sealing as here we'll be having a highly pressurized steam inside the shell or any liquid or any fluid will be there okay so for such condition we'll be using double cover butt joint so here we will be having a cover plate this is a cover plate cp1 or here will and here will be having another cover plate and the cover plate in the inner surface will be longer as compared to cover plate in the outer surface okay cp2 okay so cp2 is higher than cp1 in length you can see okay in in length you can see okay even if the cp1 is equal to cp2 then also as the inner radius will be less as compared to cp1 then after forming it into this shape this will be carrying a longer length okay it the, the arc length of the cp2 will be high as compared to this okay it is very obvious now now so the fundamental thing is cp2 should be high as long as compared to cp1 okay and riveted connection will be made like this this will be the rivets okay i am drawing i am drawing only the lines for ease okay so this will be the rivets okay now in order to make the circumferential joint what we will do before joining these two shells with each other in order to increase the length we will increase the diameter of a certain length okay so a, so a ring will be there we will increase the diameter of this shell number 2 okay up to some length okay so if you look from the side view at the cross section this is the shell this is the section of the shell number 1 this is the cut section of the shell number 1 okay now here this is the shell number 2 and both are having same inner diameter but up to a certain length we will increase the diameter of the shell number 2 okay in form of so up to a certain ring you can say you can imagine a ring okay and at that particular ring the diameter will be larger and here we will increase the diameter of a certain length almost equal to the diameter of the other sorry the outer diameter of the shell number 
ok. So, if let us say d o is the outer diameter, so we will deform this shape through a certain operation and will increase the diameter of the shell number 2 up to a certain length. So, that up to this distance let us say del up to this distance del the diameter will be equal to d o ok here here the diameter is equal to d o or it may be less than d o for a tight fit ok less than or equal to d o. So, here the d is less than or equal to d o. So, if the diameter is less than d o then we will be having an interfering fit we will be having an interfering fit ok. Now, here by doing so we will be having a connection like this let me draw the diagram in a very exaggerated manner. So, this will be like this ok this will look like this ok. Now, here we, we are having an overlapping contact between the shell number 1 and shell number 2. Now, we will be inserting the rivets and we will be forming the riveted connection between the shell number 1 and shell number 2. Okay, so, this will be the procedure to form the circumferential joint. So, circumferential joints are lap joints are lap joints. So, I have told you the entire procedure through which the shells and the halves of the shells will be joined. So, the half of the shells will be joined by butt connection double cover butt joint will be used and the different shells will be engaged with each other using a lap joint ok. So, the circumferential remember circumferential joint will be lap joint. But the longitudinal joints will be the butt joint ok. So, this will be the joints. Now, let us see the design procedure for the butt joint that is the longitudinal joints in the boiler ok. So, we will be starting with the longitudinal joint first then we will be seeing the circumferential joint ok. So, now let us see design of longitudinal butt joints in boiler shell ok. So, as I have told you the longitudinal butt joint will be connecting the two halves of the shell like this ok. So, here we will be having rivets like this, there will be number of rows ok in the riveted connection. Now, now let us say that D, D is the inner diameter of the shell ok. So, if D is the inner diameter of shell, D is equal to inner diameter, inner diameter of shell ok. T is the thickness of shell, thickness of shell or you can say or shell plate ok. Both may be in mm, so here let us take in mm ok. Pi, Pi is the internal, is the internal pressure, internal pressure of fluid of fluid in shell ok and here it will be in Newton per mm square. Then what are the various types of stresses that will be present in the boiler shell ok. So, before discussing this let us discuss the various stresses. So, this is part of the strength of material and you have you may have discussed everything in the thin uh, cylindrical pressure vessels ok. If you have not if have if you have not seen those lectures you can refer to those lectures uh, directly from the subject of strength of material then you will be have a very uh, a very clear idea about the various stresses ok. So, let me give you a very brief idea ok. So, if this is a cylindrical shell let us take an element ok. Let us take an element. Now, as this shell is completely packed ok. So, the gases at certain pressure will not be able to escape ok. So, they will be they will start pushing the walls ok like this due to pressure. So, there will be two effect of this pressure if the internal pressure is pi. So, due to this pressure the vessel will try to elongate and also there will be a tendency to increase the diameter ok. So, this pressure will try to increase the diameter of the shell due to this a circumferential strain will be there in the circumferential in, in the circumference <coughs> sorry. So, this is trying to increase the diameter. So, there will be change in the circumference the circumference will try, will increase due to this internal pressure also here you can see this is trying to increase the 
length of the shell so there will be change in length of the boiler so there will be overall change in volume of the shell due to the internal pressure but that is not part of this discussion now here as you can see this is trying to increase the circumference so there will be a stretching a stretching will be there along the circumference okay this arrow represents the stretching along the circumference also this is trying to increase the length hence there will be any stretching stretching will be there along the length okay now if you take an element over here let us take an element okay so this element will feel a tensile stress along the longitudinal axis and a tensile stress along the circumferential direction so here you can see there the wall of the shell is subjected to a biaxial state of stress okay and here sigma l is the longitudinal stress longitudinal longitudinal stress and sigma c and sigma c is the circumferential circumferential stress also known as hoop stress okay hoop stress so both st both these stresses are tensile in nature because the internal pressure will finally increase the length and the circumference of the shell okay so when the shell is trying to resist the effect of the internal pressure the stresses will induce okay so these are the stresses so circumferential stress will be there in the circumference of the shell okay and this will be along the length of the shell okay now if you analyze the state of stresses okay then you then it is very very simple analysis if you want to analyze over here only you do if you don't want to see those lectures then also you can have very simple idea so just split the joint split the shell into two halves okay here let us see the lower part for a better understanding okay here we have the d okay of the shell like this this distance this is the length of the shell l is the length of the shell t <coughs> is the thickness of wall material okay or you can say thickness of shell t is the thickness of shell now d is the inner diameter okay now the pressure force okay the pressure force which will be acting on this plane okay as stress is induced due to internal resisting forces so in order to analyze these stresses we have to cut a section that is will be going for method of section so as this is stress if you look from the side okay so these stresses will be in the circumferential direction like this so in order to analyze this the circumference stress we must cut the section like this okay which will be passing through the center okay hence on splitting the cylinder into two halves again we will be able to see the circumferential stress okay so as you can also see from this diagram that if you want to analyze the sigma c then you have to cut a section as sigma c is the normal stress basically acting on a certain fiber so in order to find out that fiber we have to make a plane perpendicular to the direction of this stress and hence we will be cutting the cylinder into two halves okay so here here from this diagram we will be getting the value of sigma c now what is the applied force as this is a pressurized vessel so in this projected area as this is a curved shape so we will be taking the projected area so in this projected area a pressure is acting okay p is the internal pressure so the pressure which is trying to which is trying to expand the circumference that is known as the bursting force okay so the pressure force which is trying to expand the circumference that is also known as bursting force bursting force okay will be equal to this internal pressure pi into the projected area that is d into t okay so this is the force which is trying to enlarge the diameter of the shell now this force will be resist will be resisted by the self with by the material of shell itself and the material which is resisting this bursting force is this this material and this much material will be resisting this pressure force that is the bursting pressure okay so this resisting force can be calculated by the formula of stress and stress is equal to what resisting uh, stress is resisting force per unit area so this resisting force will be stress into the area okay so resisting force resisting force 
resisting force will be equal to stress and this is stress is the circumferential stress okay this is the direction of stress this is the direction of stress in circumferential direction sigma c okay so sigma c circumferential stress into area so this is t into l and we here we have two rectangles so t into l 2 into t into l so 2 into t into l okay now for equilibrium for equilibrium for equilibrium these forces must be equal, equal. so bursting force bursting force should be equal to resisting force okay so this will be equal to this will be pi into d into t is equal to is equal to it is not p into not this is not p into d sorry this projected area is d into l sorry this will be d into l okay projected area will be d into l okay make the corrections okay this projected area will be d multiplied by the length okay so this will be the area of this rectangle okay so this will be the projected area so d into l d into l is equal to sigma c into 2 into t into l okay so this will get cancelled so the circumferential stress can be written as pi into d divided by 2t okay this is the value of circumferential stress circumferential stress okay now in order to get the value of sigma l that is the longitudinal stress we must cut a section perpendicular to the direction of sigma l so sigma l is acting in the longitudinal direction and any plane which is perpendicular to the longitudinal direction is the cross sectional plane so we will be analyzing sigma l in the cross sectional plane so this is the cross section of the shell this is the cross section of the shell okay now here this is the pressure force this will be the pressure force and this pressure force pressure force pi will be equal to pi into the area the diameter is d so this will be pi by 4 d square pi by 4 d square and being a thin cylinder this is a thin cylinder so we can write the resisting area this will be the resisting area okay this is the pressure force which will try to increase the length and the Uh, then the pressure force will be resisted by the material present in the cross section so this is the material present in the cross section because this will be this will be acting over the cross section the effect of the force will be on the cross section as you can see the sigma l that is the longitudinal stress is the stress on the cross section how can we say that because on cutting the section perpendicular to the direction of the stress we get the cross section area okay so this is the simple method to obtain at which cross section the stress is present that is the method of section so through method of section it is very clear that here we will be having the longitudinal stress so this will be the resisting area resisting area resisting area and this will be equal to pi into d into t okay so if this is resisting area then we can have resisting force resisting force because stress is resisting force per unit area so multiplying the stress that is sigma l okay this is the sigma this is sigma l sigma l to the area that is pi into d into t will be having the resisting force so the pressure force will be equal to the pressure force will be equal to resisting force so equal to resisting force so this will be pi into pi by 4 d square is equal to is equal to sigma l into pi into d into t okay so pi pi will get cancel d and d square will get cancel so sigma l that is longitudinal longitudinal stress is coming out to be the longitudinal stress is coming out to be sigma l is equal to pi into d divided by 4t okay now if this is equation number 1 and this is equation number 2 this is equation number 2 then on comparing you can easily tell that sigma c is higher than sigma l okay so if i ask you along which plane or along which joint there will be a higher tendency of failure so the tendency of the failure will be more around the circumferential direction okay that that means the longitudinal joints okay if you take if you take uh, an element here 
in the shell this is the this is the shell okay carrying the rivets or joint okay so here you can see that along the longitudinal direction along the longitudinal direction that is the longitudinal joint this is the longitudinal joint longitudinal joint so along the longitudinal joint which is stress is acting this is stress is acting Okay, and what is this stress? This is the hoop stress that is sigma c. So, sigma c acts on the longitudinal joint. So, on longitudinal joint, note it down, sigma c that is hoop stress or you can, you may call it circumferential stress or circumferential stress, okay, will act will act on longitudinal longitudinal joint okay clear and hoop stress which acts like this so it is very clear that the circumferential joint will be here the longitudinal stress so longitudinal stress sigma l okay will act will act on circumferential joint okay and this is very clear from the direction of stresses okay as this stress is act is acting on the cross section plane okay that means if you want to draw stresses at every location so you will be seeing these stresses are acting on the circumference the sigma sigma l will be acting on a circumference Okay, so hence circumferential joint will be subjected to longitudinal stress. Remember, never ever forget. Okay, uh, you may be confused that sigma c, that is the circumferential stress, will be will be acting on the circumferential joint, and the longitudinal stress will be acting on the longitudinal joint. No, this is wrong. Things are very opposite, are just opposite. Okay, sigma c, that is circumferential stress, will be acting on the longitudinal joint, and sigma l, that is longitudinal stress, will be acting on the circumferential joint. Okay, and this is stress is the greatest stress. This is the greatest stress. Greatest stress. So the calculation for the Boiler shells will be based on the circumferential stress only. Okay. You may have seen that if you have uh, plastic pipes in your houses, okay, then uh, after long time you will see that the pipes may have a cut along their length because if you see the failure of your pipes like this here you will observe a cut and this cut is will be occur always along the longitudinal direction not on the circumferential direction because in pipe in pipe the highest stress is the circumferential stress circumferential stress because this is a cylindrical shell, this is a kind of circum uh, cylindrical shell so definitely there you will see that the highest stress is along the longitudinal uh, along sorry along the circumferential direction this is this is the circumferential direction and due to this stress the cylinder will always fail along a longitudinal plane so due to sigma c the, uh, the cylinder will always fail along a longitudinal plane okay hence sigma c is dangerous for us there is a need to save the joint uh, with respect to the hoop stresses okay now after knowing the values we can write that sigma c sigma c will be equal to pd by 2t and sigma l will be equal to pd by 4t p or pi by pi into d by 4t okay so let me write it again and we will discuss further so sigma c is equal to pi into d by 2t and sigma l is equal to pi into d by 4t now as we have joints okay as we have joints so there will be efficiency of joint so if efficiency of joint is given so if if eta eta l is the efficiency efficiency of longitudinal joint longitudinal joint then then sigma c will be equal to pi into d divided by 2t into eta l eta l so the efficiency of longitudinal joint will affect the value of circumferential stress 
okay and as i have told you sigma c will act on the longitudinal plane and sigma l will act on this cross sectional plane that means this will be perpendicular to the circumference okay so the effect of circumferential stress will be observed on the longitudinal joint okay on the longitudinal joint whereas the effect of longitudinal stress that is pi into d by 40 will be observed in the circumferential joint so if eta c is efficiency efficiency of circumferential joint circumferential joint because because uh, I have, we have seen that the circumferential joints will be the lab joints and the longitudinal joint will be the butt joint. So, there is a possibility that they may have different efficiency. But if in the, if in the question the different value of efficiency is not given, only one efficiency is given that is the, the efficiency of riveted joint is 80 percent is given something like that. So, in that situation you will consider that eta L that is efficiency of uh, the longitudinal joint and the circumferential joints are the same. Okay. So, if eta c is the efficiency of circumferential joint, then we will write sigma l as p i into d divided by 40 into eta c. This will be the hoop stress and the longitudinal stress. Okay. Now, write it if efficiency of joint, okay, eta joint is given. It is not mentioned, it is not mentioned that eta uh, l and eta c the value of eta c and eta l are not mentioned separately then efficiency of joint will be same for longitudinal joint and for the circumferential joint okay so if eta l and eta c are not given separately are not given separate or not separately given okay so why we need these formulas so, the design of the boiler shed begins from the calculation of thickness of the shell material. So, first of all we will calculate the thickness, thickness of plates or you can say shell, okay, thickness of plates or you can say shell. So, as sigma c is the highest stress between the circumferential and the long, long tail stress, hence we will be designing for the highest value of stress. So, from here if, if sigma permissible is permissible tensile stress is permissible permissible tensile stress permissible tensile stress that may be equal to S U T divided by factor of safety okay, for the material. Okay. So, if this is permissible tensile stress, it may be also calculated using SYT divided by factor of safety depends on the types of <coughs> types of the material we are using for the shell. Okay. Now, this is the permissible tensile stress. So, this sigma c should be less than or equal to sigma permissible. Okay. So, for calculating dimension, for calculating dimension we always use the condition that is induced stress is less or equal to the permissible stress this is the induced stress this is the permissible stress so on solving this equation we can find out we can find out t as t equal t should t as this is p i into d divided by 2 t okay into eta l we will considering we will consider the the efficiency of the longitudinal joint also okay so this will be less than or equal to sigma permissible or for limiting case we can write we can write okay we can write p i into d divided by 2 t into eta l is equal to sigma permissible then the thickness t is coming out to be p i into d divided by 2 into sigma permissible into eta l. So, this will be the thickness of the thickness of shell. Okay? This is the first step. Okay? This is the very first step. Now, based on the thickness of shell, here it will be in mm as we have assumed that 
the pressure is newton per mm square and diameter and thickness are in mm so this must be in millimeters only okay now after calculating the thickness of the shell we can calculate the diameter of rivet okay diameter diameter of rivet now for the diameter of rivet we know that the rivet can carry only two stress that is crushing stress and the shearing stress so if the thickness of plate is less than 8 mm if the t is coming out to be less than 8 mm then we will equate okay so if t is if t is less than 8 mm okay so to find to find rivet diameter to find rivet diameter equate equate shear strength of rivet shear strength of rivet to crushing strength of the rivet crushing strength of rivet okay so the shear strength that is ps will be equal to pc and on equating these two values we will finding the we will find the value of diameter of rivet okay now second case that if if t that is thickness of plate t is greater than 8 mm or you can say greater than equal to 8 mm then we can use uh, an empirical correlation that is known as unwin's formula then use unwin's formula okay and this unwin's formula is d equal to 6 root okay so on using this simple correlation we will be able to find out the diameter of the rivet now after calculating the diameter after calculating the diameter okay we will be calculating the margin okay margin that is m okay and this margin m will be equal to 1.5 times of diameter or for safety it must be greater than or equal to 1.5 times of diameter and this will come in millimeters and while taking after taking the proper margin we will be able to avoid the shearing of the plate and the crushing of the plate near the edge of the plate okay now after this we will calculate the pitch okay pitch of rivet So according to according to IBR that is Indian boiler regulation Indian boiler regulation Indian boiler regulation the minimum value of pitch should be equal to two times of the diameter of rivet okay it should be equal to two times the diameter of rivet so this is the minimum value so you can write the P that is pitch should be greater than or equal to two times of diameter so this is the value of pitch now if you talk about the transverse pitch transverse pitch so for chain riveting for chain riveting okay we know what is chain riveting okay so for chain riveting the transverse pitch pt will be equal to two times of d that is the minimum value of pt should be equal to two times of diameter sorry pt only okay pt will be equal to two times of diameter okay and for zigzag riveting for zigzag riveting pt that is transfer uh, pitch will be equal to 0 0.33 times of pitch plus 0 0.67 times of d this will be the relationship for pitch according to the indian boiler lag regulations now according to ibr the whole diameter whole diameter that is dh okay so dh will be equal to d plus 1 to 2 mm okay so you will be adding some extra thicknesses that is 1 to 2 mm in the holes so uh, the you can say according to indian boiler regulation the hole for the rivet that is rivet hole may be 1 to 2 mm higher than the 
diameter of the rivet. So, this will be the design procedure for the longitudinal joint that is the butt joint for the boiler shell. Now, let us see the design procedure for the lap joint that is the circumferential joint for the boiler shell. Now, let us see lap joints or circumferential joint for the boiler. Now, first of all, we will be calculating the thickness of the plate. If there is a question directly based on the lap joint or the circumferential joint for the boiler, then first of all, we will be calculating the thickness of the shell or the thickness of the plate required to form the boiler shell. Okay? Now, here there will be no difference in the formula. As previously, we have seen that the thickness of plate, thickness of plate or you can say shell, thickness of plate or shell that is T was P i into E P i into D divided by 2 into sigma permissible okay sigma t permissible multiplied by eta L okay this was the thickness of the plate and here we, will, we do not need to change this formula okay we will be using the same formula because the thickness will be always based on the highest value of the stress and that is the circumferential stress okay so here we will be using the circumferential stress okay circumferential stress okay and for designing the circumferential stress should be less than or equal to permissible stress okay so, we will be considering the limiting case that is sigma c is equal to sigma permissible and we will be putting the sigma value of sigma c that is this value in this equation and we will be getting the value of the thickness of the plate. Okay? Now, the thing is in some cases you may see an allowance is given to the plate that is known as corrosion allowance. Okay? So, uh, as this is handling a steam that is nothing but a vapor state of the water, hence it will cause corrosion of the shell plate. Hence we must have some extra thickness of the metal so that there will be no chance of failure due to the circumferential stress. So, C A is known as corrosion allowance okay? and if this is to be considered in the calculation, the value must be given in the question. Okay? So, here if C A is the corrosion allowance then T will be equal to P I into, uh, P I into D divided by 2 into sigma C into eta L okay, plus C A okay, plus C A. This will be the thickness of material. Okay. Now, this will be equal to sigma permissible. Sigma C will be equal to sigma permissible. So, this formula will be same for the butt joint as well as the lap joint. Okay. Now, after this again the things will remain same as the diameter will be calculated using Unwin's formula. Okay. If, if T is greater than 8 mm okay? and if it is less than 8 mm then we will go for the condition that we will equate the PC that is crushing strength of the rivet with its shear strength okay? and we will find and we will find the value of D okay? we will find D. Now in any situation in any situation in any situation okay d cannot be less than t this cannot happen okay so the thickness of, uh, of sorry the diameter of the rivet cannot be less than the thickness of the plate it must be greater than the value of thickness of plate okay so this must not happen now here you can see this is the circumferential joint okay so here we will be having the condition like this. Okay. So, we will be having rivets arranged in the circumference like this. Okay. These are the rivets. Now, here, now here as the rivets are arranged in the circumference of the shell, so uh, we will be measuring the pitch along the circumferential direction. So, if this is the axis of the pitch, then, then this will be the value of circumferential pitch. So, P1 is the circumferential, circumferential pitch, okay. P is the circumferential pitch, okay. And D is the diameter of the rivet, D is the diameter of the rivet. Now, in order to calculate the value of pitch, we will use the concept of efficiency of joint. Okay? So, 
Here if there is rivet, so the load carrying capacity in tearing for per pitch length will be equal to P1 into D into T into sigma T. Okay, sigma T that is the tensile stress or the tearing stress or acting over the joint. Okay, now this tearing stress will come from the pressure inside the vessel. Now, as I have told you that due to this ex due to this internal pressure, the vessel will try to elongate and hence it will create a tensile stress that is known as sigma L. Okay, so this will be this will be this uh, this sigma T will be equal to the will be equal to the pressure okay pressure force that is pi by 4 d square okay, multiply by pressure this will be the value of pt okay now if there is no rivet okay if there is no rivet so for calculating the strength of plate for strength of plate we can write pt equal to P into T into sigma T again sigma T is the same okay now if if eta 1 is the efficiency sorry eta C eta C is the efficiency efficiency of circumferential circumferential joint then this will be equal to this will be equal to the strength of the riveted plate divided by the strength of the plate only okay of joint pt of joint divided by pt of plate okay so this will be p1 minus d into t into sigma t okay so this is the value of sigma t and this will be equal to p into t into p1 into p1 into p1 into t p1 is the circumferential pitch okay p1 into t into sigma t so this will get cancelled okay and we will get 1 minus d divided by p1 okay p1 as our efficiency okay and this will be in fraction and the if the diameter of the rivet is known if the diameter if diameter of rivet is known okay is known then we can calculate then we can calculate the pitch then we can we can calculate the pitch okay we can calculate the pitch so using this equation we can calculate the pitch now let us talk about the number of rivets okay number of rivets so number of rivets of rivets in circumferential circumferential joint Okay. Now, as you can see that this is the first part of the shell and this is the second part of the shell and here we have some overlapping area to form the lap joint. Okay. Now, the pressure force that is pi by 4 into d square, okay, pi by 4 into d square into pi. Okay is trying to separate this portion hence in order to hold these two part of the shell in position we have rivets over here now this force this pressure force okay will be acting as a shear force on the riveted connection and he and here as the rivets are arranged in the circumference okay hence the uh, the size of the joint will always be known is always known because we have a fixed value of diameter has the circumference is finite okay so we'll be having a fixed number of rivets okay now so this is the force this is the pressure force pressure force and this pressure force will cause this will cause this will cause shear of rivets in circumferential in circumferential joints okay so the shear strength okay shear strength ps for joint for circumferential joint must be higher than this is the 
shear strength of the circumferential joint and this must be greater than or equal to the pressure force the pressure force so for calculating the values we must equate ps from the pressure force okay now how can we write the pressure force so if this is if this is a riveted connection so let us say that n is the number of rivet okay n is the number of rivet in the circumferential joint so if n is equal to the number of rivet number of rivet or you can call it total number of rivet in circumferential joint in circumferential joint then ps will be equal to n into pi by 4 d square into tau permissible okay tau permissible this will be the shear strength of the circumferential joint okay now this will be equal to the pressure force okay which is pi by 4 d square into pi so on equating this will be n into pi by 4 into d square into tau permissible into tau permissible divided, uh, uh, equal to pi by 4 d square into pi okay so this will get cancelled okay now from here n is equal to d square into pi divided by d square upon tau permissible okay this will be the total number of rivets in the lab joint okay now in order to avoid the shearing of the connection near the edge and the crushing of the sorry the shearing of the uh, shell near the edge and the crushing of the shell near the edge we must use a, a value of margin and here margin will also be equal to 1.5 diameter 1.5 times of diameter so this is the minimum value of margin m may be higher than 1.5 times of diameter but this is the minimum value this is the minimum margin okay in order to avoid the shearing or the crushing of the shell near the circumferential joint okay so this will be the design procedure for the lab joint that is circumferential joint in a boiler okay thank you very much